Park holding this church annual Women's Day. Our theme this year is women used by God are not all the same. Our speakers are our very own evangelist Cynthia Ray, evangelist Selena Hunter, and yours truly, Mother Belinda McCoy. Thank you for being with us this morning, and we hope that something will be done and said to help you along your way. All heads are bowed. Father God, we come back before you, Father God, one more time, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And Lord, we're thanking you, Father God, for being God and God alone, Father. Father God, we're asking you, Father God, to bless this church, Father God. Keep blessing it, Father God. Bless our pastor, Father God, and his family, Father God. And bless every precious heart it is in the building, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I want to thank you just for being God and God alone. Father God, I'm thanking you, Father God, for keeping me blessed, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and looking over me and keeping me out of hurt, harm, and danger up and down those dangerous highways out there, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we're asking you to come within this program, Father God, and let it be what you would have it to be, Father God, and let us all fall in line in the name of Jesus, Father God. Let your will be done, Father God, not our will, but your will be done, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Women used by God is not all the same. This is coming from the book of Ruth. It is noteworthy that the two books in the Bible named after the two women, one was a Jewish girl and the other was a Gentile woman who married a prominent Hebrew, Ruth and Boaz. Another significant thing these two women have in common is that both were part of God's redemptive history. God used Ruth as an important genealogical link in the Masonic line, first to David and ultimately to Christ, who will save his people from their sin. All women are not the same. Now Ruth, being a Gentile, enters the lineage of Christ as Boaz's wife. Both Rehab and Ruth's pictures God grace, since both would have been excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. Because of that ethnic origin, the book of Ruth, as McGee notes, is essentially a woman's story, and God has set the seal of an approval upon it by its inclusion in the divine library. The event in the book of Ruth took place during the time of judges, while most of the nations of Israel was wandering away from the Lord. There was a Gentile maiden named Ruth, whose face shone out with brilliance. The law also specified that Moabites were not allowed to be received into the congregation of the Lord to the tenth generation. Grace overruled in Ruth's case, as we shall see permitting her descendant, David, to become the king of Israel. Ruth decided to take advantage of this law by going out to the barley fields to gather up some of these gleanings. It was not good luck, but divine arrangements that led her to the field owned by Boaz. In him is strength, a wealthy relative of her dead father-in-law. In conclusion, and in the end, Ruth said, Entreat me not to, be lead, to lead thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go, and whether thou lodges, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Every woman is not the same, but I thank God for my mother raising me up on the real deal that is a woman of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I was saying women used by God are not all the same. 
And if I were to throw a scripture with that, it would be then Peter, Acts 10 and 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of truth that I preserve that God is no respect of person. And my person today is going to be Rahab. Of course, we all know the story of Rahab. Um, and just a little brief um, about it, we know that Joshua sent um, the spies over there to check out the land of Jericho, and um, the men was um, realized that they was there, and the uh, spies w stopped by or went to Rahab's house. And the Bible goes and tells us that um, they asked if they can come in, but Rahab at that point had a decision to make. As the story goes on, it says that Rahab agreed, and she hid the spies inside um, up on the roof to protect them from being captive. And then it goes to say that Rahab says to the spies in Joshua 2 and 9 through 14, through 13, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, and it says that I know the Lord has given you this land, and she was talking about the land where she was at, the land of Canaan, and it goes to say that she, she goes on and, and tells them, that we don't heard about you, we don't heard how y'all uh, dry, how he dried up the Red Sea. We done heard what, what he done to the kings, the Amorites, how you destroyed them over there in Jordan. But if I help you, I need you to do something for me. I need you to make sure that myself and my family are safe. And, and after, the, after they have escaped and they conquered and, and went on um, into the city of, of Jericho, um, we know that, hey, Rahab, they granted Rahab with what they said that they would do. They would keep their family safe. One of the things that I did look, and it says, I, I even thought about myself, what could we learn from Rahab? Rahab, life could have been, we can learn a lot of lessons, but one of the things that stood out to me is that, you know, um, God is no respect of person. We know that Rahab was a, was a harlot. That was her trade. We know that um, they was used to seeing different and strange men through the night coming and going in and out of her house. One thing that Rahab suffered, and, and well, I'm not going to say suffered, but one of her weaknesses that she had is that what we all have, she wrestled with sin. Romans 7 and 18 says, for I know that we wrestle against that, that there is no good thing that dwell inside of this flesh. And also in Romans, it tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But one of the things that I think about that in spite of what Rahab's background was, what she was doing, she knew who God was. She told them about that what they had done her. She done heard that, hey, uh, your God is a deliverer. And one of the things, and you don't have to take my word for it, one of the things of the good things that I looked at as what Rahab's strength was, she was a woman of faith. Hebrews 11 and 31 tells us that by the faith, by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed. So not only did she believe, Rahab was the one that, that, that confessed to the spies, um, uh, the faith of the Lord and, and the God of Israel. Rahab was the one that let them know that, hey, um, you're going to conquer this land. Even they even uh, went back and told Joshua the same thing. The exact words what Rahab had told them. But if we look at it, Rahab made it um, through, through the genealogical line, through the inheritance line of Jesus Christ. She is an example, one of the ones that the Bible has set uh, for us today, as our Christian faith. Not only was she um, one of those examples, but she was justified not only by works, by, by her faith, but by works alone. And if we just look at Rahab's background alone, we will realize that it doesn't matter what we're going through, it doesn't matter what background we have, God can still use us. We know that Noah was, Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Joshua was a liar. He can still use you. So, again, women used by God are not all the same. It doesn't matter how what your background is, but he can still use you. Women used by God are not always the same. From a harlot to a heroine, 
It is easy to be stereotyped by today's society. Sometimes we are judged by our clothes, hair length, skin color, last name, background, neighborhood, etc. Then sometimes we hear the dreaded phrase, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Today we want to recognize that women used by God are not all the same. And the woman that you saw yesterday may not be the same woman that you see today. If you are a woman of faith, you can transform from a harlot to a heroine. The woman I'm referring to today is Rahab. Rahab, most of us know her. She's almost always mentioned in the Bible as Rahab the harlot. But that's not all. Rahab, also a Canaanite, who were the hated enemies of Israel. Her most unforgettable deed was telling a lie. She ran a brothel on the edge of town. We should not judge a person's interest in God by their background, lifestyle, or appearance. Think about Rahab, a harlot, a Canaanite and a liar. You wouldn't think she would have much chance. But here she is, from a harlot to a heron. How does she get from a harlot? How does she transform from a harlot into a heroine? Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From a harlot to a heroine. From the book of Joshua, when the Hebrews were camped at Shittim in the Jordan Valley across Jericho, Joshua sent out two spies to examine the fighting force of Jericho. The, spy, the spies hid in Rahab's house, which were constructed into the city. The men sent to seize the spies and asked Rahab to bring them out. Rather, she covered them under bushes of flax on the roof, protecting them from being captured. After escaping, the spies agreed to spare Rahab and her family after conquering the city. Even if there were to be a slaughter, if she, if, if she would designate her house by placing a red cord out of the window. When the city of Jericho fell, Rahab and her whole family were saved from the agreement of the spies and were included among the Jewish people. What a heroine. All oh, women used by God are not all the same. Rahab did not seek to save herself only, but her whole family. Rahab the heron recognized something that many Israelites did not. God is not an ordinary God, and he is all-powerful. Rahab the heron is recognized as an ancestor of Jesus in Matthew 1 and 5. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Rahab the heroine is one of the only two women in the hall of faith in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews 11 and 31, King James Version says, Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. Rahab the heroine was resourceful and willing to help others at a great risk for herself and was recognized for her works in the book of James, James 2 and 25. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out the other way? The Bible let us know through Rahab that Jesus had a background a lot like ours, like yours or mine. He called himself the friend of sinners. And he said he didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He said the Son of Man was come to seek and to save that which is lost. The same grace that Rahab experienced is available to us. Women used by God are not all the same. But we all have the same opportunity to transform. I invite you into Jesus to come and be forgiven. He's already made the first move. It's up to us now. Women, 
used by God are not all the same, but we all have the same opportunity to transform our minds to be something else. We don't have to be the liar. We don't have to be the drunkard. We don't have to be the, uh, the, 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 the liar. We don't have to be the, the backbiter. We don't have to be the cheater. We don't have to be any of those things. We can transform our mind to be something else in Christ Jesus. All we have to do is let him come in and understand that through Jesus Christ, all things are possible. We don't have to be the harlot. We can all be heroes in the name of Jesus. We can all be heroic in the name of Jesus. We can all help somebody in the name of Jesus. We don't have to go out alone. We have someone to be on our side. Women used by God. No, we are not all the same. Women used by God. Some are used for one thing and some are used for another. But we can all be used by God because God looks at the, at the heart. Man look at the outward appearance, but God is looking at our heart. He's looking at what we want to do on the inside. Sometimes what we want to do is not always what we can do or portray, but God knows what we feel on the inside. So women of God, understand that we're not all the same, but we're all in the same boat. We're all together. We're all here to lift up the name of Jesus. We're all here to help somebody. All women of God, no, we are not all the same, but we all have the same opportunity. So all you have to do is let the Lord come in. Come, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. We are not the same, but we do have all the same opportunity. Women used by God are not all the same. How do you get to be from a harlot to a heroine? Lincoln Park Holiness Church is about loving people and helping community. Our main objective is winning souls. You are welcome to partner with us or help sponsor this ministry and broadcast with a donation. Please visit our website at lincolnparkchurch.com and click the Let's Give tab at the top of the screen. Feel free to leave comments. You can also download the Givelify app on your mobile phone and look for Lincoln Park Church. Cash app, cash tag, Lincoln Park CRF. We are located at 13 Heath Street in Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and we look forward to you joining us next week on NFI Radio and Catch the Wave from the number one radio station reaching the world with gospel music and preaching.